Thank you for taking your time and giving us this interview opportunity. Coming straight to the first question. West Africa's Sahel region is vulnerable to weather extremes like droughts and currently faces another hunger crisis. On a recent high-level meeting in Brussels, the Partnership for Resilience in the Sahel was launched. You've been involved in setting up this initiative. Please explain, what is this initiative going to do in the short, but also in the long run? Well, thank you for the question. It was a very interesting meeting, which I was privileged to attend. Um, there were uh, the commissioners from the uh, uh, European Commission actually asked for this meeting on very short notice, and even then about 100 delegations managed to turn up. Um, with regard to the Sahel, I think the main concern is that the droughts are happening more and more often. There have been three major droughts in the past seven years, and um, that's led to chronic malnutrition, to reduced resilience of the Sahel populations, they're not able to build up their assets and protect themselves against the next drought. So it's becoming a kind of chronic situation of droughts and then, uh, let's say, poverty, and they cannot do anything else to protect themselves against the climate change and the conflicts that are occurring in the region. Um, the first priority in, uh, in, in this conference was, of course, what are we doing to deal with the current drought situation? How are we reacting to the... Um, to the uh, famine that's uh, occurring in the area. About 8 million people are affected by the famine directly and about 18 million people in the whole of the Sahel. Um, how do you, you, you try to meet the immediate needs for food, for medicine, for water, and for shelter? But at the same time, you have to think forward. Um, the, the second priority, in fact, is uh, securing this year's harvest, making sure that people can plant again their animals are, can be kept alive so that they can go into the next season in a good condition. As a third priority, and that's actually what we were working on most of the time, um, it was a question of building up resilience um, in, in a number of ways, looking at drought-resistant agricultural systems uh, through agroforestry, for example, which has been very successful in Niger, through water harvesting techniques, which are well-known but only need to be adapted and adopted uh, through new varieties of plants. Um, another area is the building up social safety nets for the most vulnerable proportions, parts of the population. Um, of course, not everybody can has enough assets to start with, so you try to ensure that they manage to build up their assets uh, through social safety nets and things like that. And the third priority is a long, longer-term perspective of building, building up more efficient markets and uh, infrastructure so that within the region, food can move quickly and freely from one area to other, from surplus-producing areas to uh, deficit areas. At the end of the day, of course, it's cheaper to invest in longer-term resilience than to deal every time with serious droughts, mass movements of populations, and things like that. Um, the specific steps that the meeting looked at were uh, the first priority was considered to be uh, setting up kind of what they called a resilience dashboard, trying to get a, a grip on what are the factors and what could we use as indicators to, um, to measure resilience, the building up of resilience. Um, it goes a bit beyond the existing early warning systems that we have in place now, but they are also functioning better and better all the time. The second priority is to develop a roadmap. Um, the Commission and a number of delegations agreed to uh, form a small task team to, let's say, develop a kind of roadmap which would indicate important steps to be taken to build up resilience and how we would coordinate with African governments, with regional institutions, with the private sector and with civil society organizations. And maybe as, la as a last point, um, the, uh, the intention is to have a, another high-level meeting later on this year, towards, I, I assume, December or something like that, to see where we stand on developing this roadmap. I think that's uh, what I can tell you at the moment <laughs> on that. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, as illustrated by uh, Ban Ki-moon's launch of the Zero Hunger Challenge at Rio Plus 20, um, food security and especially its linkages 
with issues of resilience receive increasing attention in development discussions again. What's the link between food security and resilience? That's a pretty difficult question. <laughs> no, it's not difficult really because food security means um, having access to food. And ha to have access to food, you have to have a certain amount of resilience, which means you have the capacity to either uh, produce or to um, uh, purchase food. So, and resilience has a lot to do with do you have the assets to be able to survive, to be able to engage in economic uh, activities, to be able to feed yourself. So I think that um, basically it means that um, what it means having what you need to be able to survive these kinds of droughts. The concept of the new partnership for the Sahel emphasizes that besides the co-actors, the governments of the region and the European Commission, a wide range of other stakeholders will be included, like regional organizations, key donors and development agencies, many of them platform members. Why do you think it is so important to base such an initiative on many actors? I think it's probably because, and that's something we've come to realize in the past few years, is that agriculture itself is a multi-actor, multi-stakeholder business. So you cannot, uh, it doesn't suffice to, let's say, have just one group of actors uh, working on improving resilience and improving agriculture. So you need to go through the whole spectrum uh, of, let's say, the actors that are involved in certain value chains and go from the production functions through the marketing functions through to, let's say, the the consumer end of the of the spectrum, and um, we feel that uh, that that you know uh, maybe in the past we've been too much focused on government functions and government institutions. So now we would like to uh, definitely engage all types of different actors that could play a role in that in those food chains that bring the food to the people who need it. Um, you could think of, for example, a regional organization uh, investing like ECOWAS is doing in regional uh, food systems that would, you know, allow people, allow countries to trade among themselves, allow people, traders to move freely across borders. Um, you can think of um, the private sector, for example, investing in agro-processing and investing in reducing uh, food losses and things like that. So there are so many areas where you need this uh, cooperation between the different actors. Speaking of uh, collaborative environments, from your perspective as the current chair of the Global Donor Platform, what could the platform do towards food security and resilience in the Sahel? Well, I think in actual fact that the platform is already on board in the, in the fact that most of the platform members, if not all, I haven't counted it, were actually at present at the meeting. So um, I think that uh, also that, for example, the uh, annual General Assembly that we had last year focusing on resilience uh, was, a, was, a, was an amazing job of, let's say, highlighting resilience as a core issue in all facets of agricultural development. Now, what we could do as a platform now is to build on what we, uh, what we produced last year, what we developed last year, let's say, as a kind of resilience agenda, and um, try to bring out the, the key messages that we think are important for the Sahel situation. Um, I know that the platform has also been able to follow up with um, uh, meet the meeting in Sweden that looks at climate change uh, and uh, food security and agriculture. And there are a number of priorities on the platform agenda, such as post-harvest losses, and pastoralism, which directly link into the situation in the Sahel. So I think what we should try to do maybe in the coming months is to see how as a platform we can draw out some of these messages and share them with all of our members and then bring them to that high-level meeting that's planned later this year. Um, I will probably be in the task team working on this, uh, this roadmap, so I, I would like to take advantage of my position there to, let's say, uh, bring, bring the ideas and the uh, uh, interventions of the platform members forward. Well, thanks for the interview, Monique. Thank you. It was a pleasure.